So I'd like to start by thanking the sponsors of this video. So this video is just me looking at a man's research. And whenever you publish research, of course, people can read it and critique it. This is purely informational and educational in purpose. And so a quick history lesson. Every Damn Day Fitness made a video about Jim Stepani in which he questioned the idea that Jim Stepani says you can build 20 to 30 pounds of muscle in 12 weeks. Every Damn Day Fitness also made an Instagram post where Jim Stepani says that he maintains 4% body fat. In response to that post, some of the Jim Army commented, cited the fact that Jim does research specifically into branch chain amino acids. And some people with common sense did respond to that in saying, well, BCAAs are not effective for muscle growth. However, the silver lining in all of this is I looked at the research which they were promoting. So if you don't know Dr. Jim Stepani, a quick background, and this is from his website. Jim Stepani, PhD, is the leading authority on exercise science, sports nutrition, and supplementation. The leading authority. And his motto is, do the right thing. And I've made videos before on BCAAs, branch chain amino acids. So I'm not going to go into depth about them. However, in short, they do not hack your metabolism in terms of maintaining an anabolic state or creating more muscle growth. I also made a video about Jim Stepani and here is a quick clip rooney for you. If you're only taking branch chain amino acids after your workout, you're falling short. Finally, Jim is going to explain to you that you need complete protein sources containing all nine essential amino acids for muscle protein synthesis. Here we go. There's other ingredients that you also need in addition to the branch chain amino acids to maximize recovery and the results you get. Creatine, carnitine, as well as glutamine, betaine, and beta alanine. And again, it's time for a pillow scream. I had so much hair back then. So this video is not really about BCAAs. It's more about academic research. And so I really want you to understand, don't take research at face value. And that research is just a contribution to a knowledge base. A piece of research is not the truth on a subject matter. It is not a definitive statement that we all must follow. And for sure, some pieces of research are more valid than others. And here's the quick pyramid of evidence that I showed in my last video where you see that meta-analysis, systematic reviews at the top of the pile down to the anecdotal, my opinion type stuff, which is really the least valid. And so I decided to make my own pyramid of YouTube fitness evidence. And it looks a bit like this. Jason Blaha's Google searching, other X fans sending me one abstract or a bodybuilding.com article, just making stuff up. So the man's academic background is outstanding. On paper, you can't really question him. However, you can highly question his paper into BCAAs and introducing the magnifier of truth from which I will study this piece of research from Dr. Stepani. And so this research took place over eight weeks, which is a, a decent amount of time. It was a randomized double blind study, which is very good. It's probably about where that ends. However, instantly you have to look at the, the sample group they were using. Trained people, at least two years of training, around about 9% body fat, super, super lean. And instantly that's, that's something to think about. And so within this study, what they did is they gave three groups a different treatments. One group had BCAAs, one group had a carbohydrate drink, one, one group had a whey protein supplement. And what was found was that the group that took BCAAs built more muscle, lost more body fat and became stronger. However, a few problems. This piece of research was funded by a supplement company. I did internet search them. Instantly, what you see is a range of BCAA supplements that come up. In addition, when you look on their YouTube page, their featured video, which they chose to pin to the front of their uh, YouTube page, is a BCAA family video showing the range of their BCAA products. They clearly are very heavily BCAA based. Now I've never used supplements from this company. I have no opinion. You can buy their supplements or not. That's up to you. However, all I'm trying to do is give you factual information with context. And the company that funded this research by Dr. Stepani do sell these supplements. Now, regardless of the purpose for them funding this research, that is a clear conflict of interest. That is undeniable. And so not only were the BCAA group found to build significantly more muscle, that's the researchers' words, they also lost more body fat. Now remember, they were already 9%, uh, around 9% body fat. 
and they lost several percent more as, as part of this BCAA group. And they gained strength over their 10 repetition max for their lifts. It's almost too good to be true and, and kind of goes against everything we know for experienced lifters, li people who've been lifting for two years who are extremely lean. The idea that they could build muscle and lose fat and get stronger at the same time is quite curious. Look into my eyes, read between the lines, please read between the lines, not the wrinkles, the lines. And so you may say, well, that sounds amazing. It goes against what we know for natural people who are trained to build muscle, significant muscle, lose significant fat when already extremely lean and build strength within eight weeks. And the BCAA is being given by these researchers as the cause for that. No further discussion of correlation is, is evident in this research at all. The researchers don't discuss any other factors that may have contributed to an increase in muscle mass. For example, calories. There is no mention whatsoever in this research of how many calories participants were eating, how much of a caloric surplus people were in, or caloric deficit because these people were losing fat. It's actually calories were not equated and that is a huge huge problem that's a huge limitation if you're going to conduct a study into body composition where the intervention is bcaa and you're not going to give people the calorie information and you're not going to measure the calories that is a massive problem and we see it in so many pieces of research which we cannot hold valid and furthermore we don't know the protein intake of the participants not including the supplements we don't know what types of protein they were eating throughout the day. Were they taking in complete proteins or not? We have no idea because the researchers just did not include this. Subjects followed a standardized diet while following the program. What does that mean? What does that mean? That is perhaps one of the most vague statements you could give as to a, the, the eating protocols of people in research. They followed a standardized diet. I could ask people watching this, what is your diet? I'll probably get so many different uh, answers. Why are the researchers not giving us more detail into what these participants were eating? It's the perfect synergy. Branch chain amino acids, along with, of course, a post-workout protein source, a protein blend of whey and casein, particularly whey, casein, and egg. So now he's telling you to have branch chain amino acids on top of your branch chain amino acids. He's literally just said, take branch chain amino acids with a protein shake. A protein shake which already contains BCAAs and he wants you to add BCAAs onto the BCAAs. You look at the training, they undertook eight weeks of training. They did a four day split which consisted of training chest, uh, triceps and abs on Monday, legs on Tuesday, shoulders and abs on Thursdays, and back biceps and forearm, forearms on Fridays. That's all we have. There's no real more detail into the training they undertook, which you think would be quite important for the researchers to tell us in terms of a study looking at building muscle mass. And the reason for this is because we don't know how intensely each person trains. They don't tell us what intensity method they use. For example, percentage one repetition max, which is perhaps more objective and, and quite suitable for this type of research. Or did they use a more subjective method, such as uh, rate of perceived exertion, where the person will judge how hard they were working on a scale, most likely from one to 10. Now we don't know, we simply don't know. So some people could have been lifting proportionately harder, heavier weights for their rep range than other people. It's highly possible. Again, it's a real massive hole. And a lot of, and when I read this study, I'm left thinking, where is the data? Where is this information which will help the reader? And Jim is far more educated than me and experienced when it comes to nutrition, which makes me wonder, why is it this guy who has bold and doesn't see good, who is the one that's having to properly communicate these things to you? The current state of knowledge about BCAAs is very different to this research, which was done nine years ago in fairness. So we do understand much more now. And, and we do now, now know that these three BCAAs do, do not hack your protein synthesis and that you do need nine essential amino acids for effective protein synthesis and muscle building. And again, I'm making no assumptions. I'm just providing the facts to you. You are free to comment down below with anything that you believe you are taking away 
from this video and this piece of research. In addition, this study had a 100% compliance rate amongst participants. Nobody dropped out. Nobody deviated from, from the plan at all. I would say that's outstandingly good, as many things seem to be in this research. And then in addition, the fact that this research studied muscle gain, fat loss and strength all within one eight week study is, is quite a, a breadth of information. In much research, researchers, researchers will focus on one concept, for example, muscle growth or fat loss, because to dig deeper into the concepts, to look at the variables, to really try and understand what's happening, to measure all of these massive, massive factors in one piece of research, again, for me, is kind of skimming the surface. Again, this is slightly curious to me. And the researchers say, the greater gains in lean mass and strength experienced by the BCAA group may have been due to a greater increase in muscle protein synthesis following resistance training workouts. However, this is difficult to determine in this study as muscle biopsies were not performed. Now, most certainly with what we know now, I would say that yes, the cumulative protein intake is the key driver for protein synthesis and creating a net anabolic state, not the BCAA intervention as in this study. But the researchers in this study did not measure, uh, did not take muscle biopsies. They did not measure in depth something which would have helped to project their point. And going back to my last point, this is because they looked at three major, major issues all at the same time within one piece of eight week research. And so this is a highly problematic piece of research, highly, highly limited and problematic, a complete absence of information and data which is needed for a study such as this. There is no causation shown in my mind. The researchers just don't dig deep enough. They don't give information that's needed to try and get some clear causation. All that there is is correlation. Hopefully, my quick breakdown of this piece of research from Dr. Stepani has been quite revealing to you as to how useful it is for you. And so I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science. I'll see you soon.